after the debate, we ran a poll. And every single person we polled thinks that you're a retard. We polled uh, African Americans. They all say you're a retard. Hispanic Americans also think that you're retarded. They call you El Retardo. We even polled actual retarded people. Even they say you sound absolutely retarded. You see where this is going, Mr. President? Well, I just had a bad night. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> What's going on, party people? What is going on? It's your ride share extraordinaire, your super duper Uber drivers here, guys. Yeah, thank you, thank you. You guys, you already know the deal. Before you hop in my ride, do me a favor. Hit the like. Hit that subscribe. Poor favor. <laughs> Come on, let's do this. Hop on in. Buckle in. And let's go. Yeah! Okay, okay. Party people, welcome back. And if you're new to my channel, Thank you for hitting that subscribe button. All right, kid folks, what are we talking about today, folks? What are we talking about today? Man, what a week. This has to be the longest media week I've ever remembered. Jesus Christ. The fallout still continues on Biden, and all he has to do is stop the bleeding. That's all you have to do. Now, he went to a radio show. And he did a radio interview and he says that he's the first black woman that ran with Obama or something. By the way, I'm proud to be, as I said, the first vice president, first black woman mm -hmm. served with a black president. Mm -hmm. I'm proud of the, all the first black woman in the Supreme Court. There's just so much that we can do because together we, there's nothing. Look, this is the United States of America. Pretty bad. It's so bad that that same trip, he went and met some black folks, and this is how he encountered them. Black women, I'm going to give you some advice, all right? Whenever you meet a black man for the first time, Please do the exact same thing as Joe Biden did. We'll get so much further along, okay? We'll save the community just by doing that. Blech. Anyway, in all seriousness, we have a quote from the great Rush Limbaugh. He used to say something like, the media can make you and the media can break you. Now, the media did not make Rush. The media did not make Trump. The media did make Biden, okay? They've been covering for Biden. They've been carrying his water. They've been lying on his behalf. And now, after the debate, we see what happens, all right? Trump, after the debate, went radio silent. You did not hear a word from him. He didn't do no interviews. He didn't do no rally. He just stepped back and let the monkeys do shit at each other. The media needed some red meat. And they went after Biden like a madman. In an attempt to reassure voters about his fitness for office, Biden campaign chair Jen O'Malley Dillon holding a car with call with party leaders earlier today, telling them this too shall pass. There is a pattern, discernible pattern of Democratic officials seemingly trying to convince you, the public, to not believe what you saw and what you heard with your eyes and with your ears on Thursday night. What I've been able to do with the uh, with, with, with the COVID, excuse me, with um, dealing with everything we have to do with. Uh, look, if we finally beat Medicare, the the, 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 the total initiative relative to what we're going to do with more border patrol and more uh, asylum officers. President Trump, uh, I really don't know what he said at the end of that sentence. I don't think he knows what he said either. Democratic officials have tried to spin this in many ways. They said President Biden just had a cold. They said it was just one off night akin to when President Obama in 2012 was rusty and seemed a little huffy. But behind the scenes, make no mistake, most Democratic officials witnessed the same shocking spectacle 
that you did. The difficulty that the presumptive Democratic nominee, the current president of the United States, had just articulating his basic thoughts during the 90 minutes of the debate. And now, now after all the fallout, Biden is still on defense and Trump is over there just chilling. He didn't have to do nothing. His stock is going up. His brand is getting bigger. And you see what's going on with Biden over here. It's so bad that Mr. Gavin Newsom went and spoke out for Mr. Biden. Between that reality and the reality that we've experienced with this great American comeback, the man of integrity, honor, and decency, and Donald Trump with an extraordinary, excuse me, Joe Biden, man of decency. <laughs> Mr. Newsom, I thank Trump. Thank you for your endorsement. Anyway, so let's take some clips off the most anticipated interview of the year. George Stephanopoulos is a media darling. They love George Stephanopoulos. It's him and then Joe Scarborough. They go one and two. All right. Now, we usually have softball questions from Georgie over here. And Mr. Biden thought it was going to be a fluff interview. So he goes in and the first question off the bat goes like this. What's your plan to turn the campaign around? You saw it today. How many how many people did you get draw crowds like I drew today? You find many more enthusiastic than today? Huh? I mean, I, I don't think you want to play the crowd game. Donald Trump can draw big crowds. There's no question about that. <laughs> Mr. Georgie said, man, you don't want to compare crowd sizes with Trump. And this is the moment here. Right here, look at the face of Biden right here. Look at his face. This when he F-A-F-O. He fucked around and found out. This shit is real. His homeboy, George Stephanopoulos, and all the media got a knife in his back. Yep, they are coming after him, and he's not letting up. The whole interview was going pretty, pretty bad for Biden. But it seemed like you were having trouble from the first question in even before he spoke. Well, I just had a bad night. A bad episode with a sign of a more serious condition. It's a bad episode. Uh, no indication of any serious condition. I was exhausted. I didn't listen to my instincts in terms of preparing. And I had a bad night. You know, you say you were exhausted, and, and I know you've said that before as well, but you came, and you did have a tough month, but you came home from Europe about 11 or 12 days before the debate, spent six days in Camp David. Why wasn't that enough rest time, enough recovery time? Because I was sick. I was feeling terrible. Matter of fact, the docs with me, I asked if they did a COVID test because they were trying to figure out what was wrong. They did a test to see whether or not I had uh, some infection, you know, a virus. I didn't. They just had a really bad cold. The theme of the night is I had a bad night. I had a bad night. My bunions were popping. I had sleep apnea. I had jet lag. I had a cold. It was his favorite. Now, he had a cold, but after the debate, he went to the Waffle House. More politicians and political experts voiced their thoughts and concerns today. President Biden spoke out last night shortly after the debate. He and the First Lady stopped at the Waffle House on Cobb Parkway right near Truist Park. That is where a reporter asked him about his performance and his health. Mr. President, how did you perform tonight? I think we did well. Are you suffering from a cold? Your campaign says that you're, you're sick. There you go. They go to show you he don't care about you people. He went to the Waffle House and spread his cold around. <coughs> mm -hmm. Now, that's a perfect example right there. He don't care. He's a stubborn old man. At the end of the interview, George was asking him a question. What if Nancy Pelosi, Jeffries, Chuck Schumer, and all these other leadership ask you to step down? The stubborn old man says, I, just, I go into detail with them. I've spoken to all of them in detail, including Jim Clyburn, every one of them. They all said I should stay in the race, stay in the race. No one said, none of the people said I should leave. But if they do? Well, it's like, <laughs> they're not going to do that. You sure? Well, yeah, I'm sure. 
look, I mean, if the Lord Almighty came down and said, Joe, get out of the race, I get out of the race, the Lord Almighty's not coming down. I'm not going nowhere. Only person that can take me down is God Almighty himself. Yeah. So all you folks out there who keep talking about uh, Trump is a threat to democracy and the democracy we're doing for democracy. And former Vice President Pence is evidently not supporting a second term for Trump because he knows Trump is a threat to our democracy and he only fights for himself, not you. This guy right here is a bigger threat than we ever had. The whole world is seeing him in decline. And God forbids, if something happens, uh, an attack, or uh, one of our troops, or something on the home front, something happened, and this is the guy we got to turn to. Well, let me say this as clearly as I can. I'm staying in the race. Yeah! I'll beat Donald Trump. I will beat him again in 2020. What? Everybody see it now, including the media who propped him up. And now they're eating his ass up. I want to blame all you people out there for voting for him if anything happens. That's my thoughts for today. If you guys got any value out of my content, do me a favor. Hit the like. Hit that subscribe. You see that notification bell? Turn on that notification bell so you get my latest and greatest. Share this content with your best friends. And tell your mama I said hi. All right, all right. Till next time, guys, I'll see you again. And all you grumpy old men, get your ass off my lawn.